Hey guys, my name is Blaze and welcome back to our ongoing tutorial series made right here in GameMaker Studio 2. And in the last video we actually created some... I don't know, I forgot. I've forgotten completely. No, we created the identifiers for our range attacks. And in the video before that we had the range attacks video itself. So here it is, it's working, which is great. In this video, hang on, give me a sec guys, I'm just gonna check if I'm actually recording. Great, I am. And in this video, what we are going to do is we are going to create melee attacks. Now a couple of things before we do get started, we will be working with the object player today, and we will be working with our macro script, our get input script, and we will be creating a new script that is similar to ranged attack. So if you watch the ranged attack video, but you're looking for an actual coding or programming video where I explain each line of code, or at least each line that's important, then this is the video for you. But if you want to watch the original, then I will put a link to that somewhere in this one. So let's head on to our macro script. We're going to start today here and we're going to add a new macro because we are doing melee attacks and this is where we need to start. So we're going to add a new macro in, macro, and we'll just call it melee attack. And I will give it a value of three. Now don't forget that with your macros, you don't need the semicolons at the end. That's just something to keep in mind. Next, we're going to be here in get input. We're done with macros for today. Let's add in a new variable and I'm just gonna call it attack2. And I will say, actually, you know what? Instead of attack2, let's just use melee. There you go. Melee and I will check for keyboard we are going to look for when we press VK, I don't know. I think for now, we'll just use enter just for now. What the aim of this tutorial series is going to be is to give you guys an idea of what goes into an action RPG. And we are going to create a game from start to finish. Yes, but it won't be something that you would put onto the shelf you would still need to do some further optimization, especially for older systems, but this will give you most of what you will need. Um, so that's just something I want to put out there. So next here in state idle, what we're going to do is we're going to say if we press the melee key, we're going to reset our image index. So image, whoops, image index. So basically our image index is what frame are we on? We're going to set that to zero so that basically when we switch our animation, we play from the start of that animation and we're going to change our state to state melee tack. Now we don't have a script for that yet, so let's create that now. We're going to create a script and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this and I'm going to drag it into here. If you didn't know that Game Maker Studio could do that, you do now. So let's keep, uh, let's keep the state range attack window open just for reference because it is going to look very similar. Although it's how we use it is going to be slightly different. The first line that we're going to need to do, the first thing that we need to do is we need to say that, well, our action changes from whatever we were doing before to melee attack. And then we need to, just like in the range attack over here on this side, we need to create three local variables. So var underscore x, that's going to be our x offset. There we go, we're going to store these locally just to keep, just keep that in mind. And we're gonna say var y equals, also equals the y offset. Now, why have I got these separate? Just in case you might have different sized objects, you might want to have, I don't know, 16 by 32 for your um, offsets or something different, just to keep your X and Y axes separate. You kind of don't want to make them the same value unless that's what you're aiming for, by which case, go for it. And then the third variable that we need 
is going to be whoever created this. Again, this is to prevent the friendly fire. And we are going to store our object type. So right now it looks, it actually looks very similar to the ranged attack script. So again, what we need to do is we need to say if the floor value, so the number, the frame number rounded down, so image index is greater than two, then we are going to make sure that we run whatever's inside here. And we're going to say if it doesn't already exist, so if not instance exists, should be down here, not instance exists, um, parent projectile, and then we're going to create, then with the, oops, instance create depth, not layer, we need to create depth. Now, when you have a script here that is made one of the default scripts for Game Maker Studio, it will actually tell you down here at the bottom what you need to put in. So what we're going to put in is our X position plus our X offset. Mm -hmm. I don't know why these haven't turned yellow. They should turn yellow, but uh, I guess we'll find out soon enough. <clears throat> and then we need to, we then need to go Y plus our local variable Y. No, not the Y. And then we also need to put in the depth. We're just going to use zero for now. And the object that we're going to create is the parent projectile. And with it, this is where the difference comes in. So let's have a look at our range attack first. And we can see that we are giving it a an X and Y direction. And then we are also storing a creator. In this case, what we actually need to do is set its speed to equal zero, but we still need that creator. So creator equals underscore the local variable creator. And I can see why it hasn't actually, I'm gonna rename it. I forgot to name the script. So we need to name it state melee tack. <clears throat> like I'm recording this and it's 7.30 in the morning and I think I went to bed at, I don't know what, what time I went to bed actually. So oh, let's hope this works. Uh, this is all unscripted. So I'm not sure if anything will work today, especially since that is not, our local variables aren't coming up as yellow. I'm slightly concerned about that. But uh, let's keep pressing on. Hopefully something interesting will happen. I don't know. <laughs> let's move on to the object player. And what we are going to do now, so we are done with writing scripts for today, um, writing the melee script. So make sure that the difference between your melee attack and your ranged attack is that your action changes to melee attack and your speed is set to zero, but we aren't setting a specific direction, seeing as it is basically just going to be in front of us. And I completely forgot to check. Uh, we missed a couple of lines here, so we need to make sure that we set our can attack variable to false. I keep forgetting that. Can attack to false, good. And we apparently also need to check that if we can attack and and can attack. So basically when we are here in the melee sequence, we're going to check our floor index. If the image index or the frame is greater than two, <clears throat> if it's at or greater than two, then we're going to check if we already have a parent projectile in this case, and if we can't attack, because if we can't attack, then we can't really do anything here. There are some problems with this, the way that this script is set up, but don't worry, we will clean that up. We will clean most of this code up um, a lot later. Well, not a lot later, but definitely later in the series. So let's, uh, let's finish off with the melee attack here. We're done for today. 
Let's now go into the Players Create event, and we are going to add in some new entries. And those new entries are basically our melee animations. I don't have any melee animations, but hopefully you do. And I'm going to go horizontal melee attack equals view player attack side. And again, we're going to do that for moving up. View. Don't forget that you need to use square brackets here for the arrays. I haven't come across a single programming language that didn't use square brackets for arrays. So we need to use view up and melee attack as well. And we're going to set that to the same thing. We don't have, well, I don't have a range attack and a melee attack animation. So you guys are going to have to come up with your own to put in. <clears throat> and then we're going to go down and melee attack and view player our attack down there we go so that's done for now that's the create event that's done we don't need to do anything in the step event so we can close that but here in animation end event in the animation end event after we make it after we check a case for the range attack we need to have a case for melee attack now some of you might think why not just make the melee attack the same as the range attack? I will explain that in a second. Okay, so here we need to change our state back to state idle. Uh, yep. <clears throat> and we need to reset can attack to true. Uh, equals true. Done. Okay, so let's play the game and let's see if nothing comes up. No errors come up. I'm really concerned about those. Uh, oh no, everything works so far. We have range attacks. But you can see here that after the animation finishes playing, and we, we just actually just hurt ourselves, but after the animation plays, the melee box or our parent projectile is still there. We need to make sure that it actually destroys it. So after we set can attack to true, actually no, before we change our idle state, we change back to the idle state or anything else, we need to instance destroy the parent projectile. Done. Okay, so that's this line here, this instance destroy parent projectile is the only difference between the range attack and the melee attack. So that's just something that you guys need to keep in mind. So let's play the game now. <clears throat> and let's hope that it works out the way we want so we can... Okay, so after he finishes the animation, just get the mouse out of the way. After he finishes playing the animation, the melee box disappears. Now keep in mind that my offset is 32, so that's why it's kind of appearing, you know, it looks like it's really far away from him, but that's because my main offset is just generally 32, so that's something that you'll have to fiddle around with yourselves, and the offset is of course here in this step event, and that is determined by a cell value, so that's just something that I want you guys to keep in mind. You could of course say divided by two, and that should fix everything, I'm pretty sure. So let's have a look at that, and maybe we can get some results, some better looking results. So there you go, now it's actually in front of him. So there you go, we have some melee stuff going on. It's pretty good, pretty awesome. Well. At least in my opinion. I'm not sure about you guys. So that's all for today. We have finished doing melee attacks. Hopefully you've learned something and if you have then don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. I am still very tired. I'm still very groggy so I think I'm going to go back to sleep but for now that's all that we're going to do. In the next video we're actually going to spend uh, some time doing concept art and some early 
game art. Now I say early game art because it might or it might not be the final visuals that we will use for this particular series. Um, but we're going to start with some concept art first. This is a complete games development series, so hold out for that. And the next few videos after that will be a few more spriting videos. And then we'll start putting all of those new sprites, the new tiles, so we have an actual environment into the game so that everything looks awesome. But for now, guys, that's all from me. I hope you've learned something, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.